I think we should have a law at the federal level that would say after 15 weeks, no abortion on demand, except in cases of rape, incest, to save the life of the mother. And that should be where America's at. This week, Senator Lindsey Graham sparking an outcry from Democrats and, frankly, confusion among his fellow Republicans when he introduced a new nationwide bill that would ban abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. It was definitely a head-scratcher, given that members of Graham's own party don't want to be talking about anything at all having to deal with abortion right now. Even Fox News' Jesse Waters called Graham out for his timing. you got to talk tactics, Senator. It's terrible timing. Terrible tactics. We could have shoved this down their throat on the day the Americans got hammered with this inflation number and the market crashing. And now all the media and the Democrats are talking about federal abortion ban, federal abortion ban. You know, that's not smart politics, right? Lindsey Graham taking advice from Jesse Waters on timing is a little rich. So it's worth noting Republicans, including Graham himself, have said repeatedly that the abortion issue should be left up to the individual states. Well, apparently that's now changed, which is something the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, pointed out in her weekly press conference on Wednesday. You have to ask the Republicans as to why they poured cold water on it, but they know they are digging a hole and they just keep digging it. It's so unfortunate. And as I say, as a mother of five in six years and one week, I keep saying uh, I, I respect everybody's view about how they decide to do what they do. And we should continue to respect their freedom to do so. But I think what you're seeing there is a conflict within the Republican Party. There are those in the party that think life begins at the candlelight dinner the night before. Listen, we all heard Senator Graham say that a federal 15-week ban, quote, should be where America is at. Well, here's a news flash for you, Lindsey Graham. That is not where America is at. There's Wall Street Journal polling that finds independent voters are leaning toward Democrats in midterm elections. That poll found the Supreme Court ruling on abortion is the single issue most likely to make them vote this November. And that's ahead of inflation, border security, gun violence, and the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago. Now, don't forget, 59 percent of voters in Kansas already voted to preserve abortion access in the typically Republican state last month, sending a clear message that abortion rights are something most voters just aren't willing to sacrifice. On top of all of that, there's brand new polling from the 19th that really brings this home. Seven in 10 Americans don't think politicians are informed enough about abortion to create fair policies. Joining me now is Democratic Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. She is the chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Congresswoman, it's always an honor and a pleasure to have you join the show. Thank you for being here again. I wanted to get your reaction when you saw Lindsey Graham announce this nationwide bill. Uh, Katie, it's great to see you. It was a complete head scratcher, and I don't often agree with Fox News, but um, I have to agree here. Uh, it was remarkably. Um, you know, kind of the worst political move for the Republican Party. But I think what it shows you, Katie, is exactly what the Republican playbook is. They've been hiding behind this idea that this abortion should be left to the states, blah, blah, blah. That is not the case. Uh, Republicans want to ban abortion across the country. And um, we should also remember that this nationwide ban is seven weeks shorter than the nationwide, the last nationwide ban the Senator Graham introduced, which was 22 weeks. So this is the trend that Republicans have. They want to ban abortion. Lindsey Graham has made it very clear that that is what Republicans want to do. It is bad politics, but most importantly, it takes away fundamental freedoms. And America does not agree with this. It is completely out of step with Americans across the country. Let's take a really quick listen, please, to Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell's reaction to Lindsey Graham's proposed bill. With regard to his bill, you'll have to ask him about it. Most of the members of my conference prefer that this be dealt with at the state level. Congresswoman, is this something that Republicans can successfully do this dance on? Can they distance themselves from almost each other, let alone from this issue? No, they really can't, Katie. And, you know, when, when the Dobbs decision came down, I was everywhere saying that 
Republicans and the extremist Republican Supreme Court that made that decision and stripped away the freedom for women to make choices about our own bodies, that it would backfire enormously, that voters across this country would be furious, that they had underestimated the wrath um, and the anger of voters across this country, women voters, but also their families. And that is, in fact, what we're seeing. They have a plan to strip abortion away. And Lindsey Graham's bill just shows that. They can try to dance around it. They can try to say things that contradict it, but they have too many pieces of evidence to show us exactly what their game plan is. It is out of step with the American public, and it is backfiring on them massively. Voters are coming out in Kansas, across the country, um, in droves to say, no, we don't trust government to make decisions about fundamental freedoms around our own bodies. And that's that's the bottom line. I think it's playing very badly for Republicans. Um, and it is why it is so important for Democrats to increase our majority in the Senate, to hold the House, and to codify the Women's Health Protection Act, which the House has already passed twice. Yeah, so that's the perfect segue to my next question. Talk to our viewers about the potential to successfully codify this abortion access. Can we have some realistic time frame and maybe just some realism about whether or not this could actually happen? Yes, I think the challenge has been for a long time um, the filibuster. We have not had a 60 vote majority in the Senate, except for a very brief period of time during Barack Obama's presidency. Um, in order to be able to codify the, uh, the, the legislation, the uh, Women's Health Protection Act legislation. So I think what we need to do is get a couple more senators who are willing to at least have a carve out of the filibuster. Katie, you know I think the filibuster should go completely, mm -hmm. but at least a carve out so that we can codify Roe v. Wade and uh, other important things like voting rights, et cetera. But that is really possible. We are on the brink of doing that. With just a couple more uh, pro-choice Democratic senators, we will be able to carve out an exception to the filibuster at a minimum and codify this legislation. That's how close we are. But we need to hold the House and we need to expand the Senate by at least a couple. And your message underscores the importance for people to get out and vote blue in November. Congresswoman, I want to switch gears a bit because I read the Washington Post piece. It's, it talked about your recent experience with threats of political violence. This Washington Post article was remarkable, and it talked about what you experienced. It may have been in the time frame of maybe just one particular night, um, and it involved an armed man. He had a Glock. There was a, a bullet chambered, um, and he was shouting right outside of your personal Personal residence. He's now been charged with felony stalking. As the paper also points out, threats against members of Congress continue to increase every year. I first want to say to all of our viewers, I urge you to go and read this article, because I think it's really important for them to understand what you've been going through. But I wanted to ask you, as a member of Congress, and frankly, just as a normal person, you were just watching TV with your husband and your dog at the time. How do you cope with with this. These are very real threats of violence against sitting members of Congress. Well, Katie, it, um, it was a decision that I made to go public with it because I really think we need to make the connections for people between Donald Trump, the big lie, the insurrection on January 6th, and what is happening to us in our homes, what is happening to us as a country. Um, you know, I think for me, uh, it, it's not always easy to be vulnerable as a member of Congress and talk about these things, but I think that we have a lot of strength. Um, that is how I get through it. I remember what my job is every day. I remember that it's both to connect with voters across the country and show people that we really are human, that we go through a lot of things um, that we don't always talk about, but also to do my job and make sure that America is returned to a country where civility prevails where racism and sexism and violence, political rhetoric, um, insurrections don't happen. And um, that is what I'm going to continue to do. So no one's going to scare me off of my ultimate mission, which is to advance democracy and justice and equity and equality. But um, obviously, it takes a toll on me, on my family, and I don't want other people to have to go through this. 
Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, thank you for your candor always and for the transparency of what your journey has been. We appreciate you being here today and for your insight. Thank you so much, Katie.